Uh oh, Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel slammed for woke rainbow rocking chair honoring Pride Month. You should see all the uh, all the news stories on this. Conservatives enraged by the rocking chair. No, I, I don't think so. But Cracker Barrel is known as kind of a conservative company out of Tennessee. They basically said, yeah, this woke crap, we're not really dealing with it. The old LGBTQ thing plus thing, we're not really doing that. Now it appears that they have rolled over and gone woke. Let's get into it. Here we go. Get woke, go broke. Isn't that what's happening? And I think you're saying, I mean, with the drop in Target stock and the drop in Anheuser-Busch, there's a real correlation. If you go a little too far, if you make bathing suits for kids that have a flap for genitalia that they, yeah, yeah, that whole thing. Yeah, that's not really the values that I think most Target shoppers are looking for. And Cracker Barrel having a rainbow rocking chair after they kind of, you know, spent years and years and years going down a different direction. Hey, we have more conservative values. We're not, you know, we're not endorsing that crap. Everybody's kind of major, major corporate America is just kind of bent over and going, okay, what's our DEI score? Uh, we need it to get better. Here's a rocking chair. Because a lot of this is just, I mean, it, it, it's appearance, right? These companies are doing this for their appearance to the marketplace, not what their base, their actual values are based on. Southern-based fast food chain Cracker Barrel was blasted for going woke by some of its biscuits and gravy-eating customers after posting an image of a rocking chair, a rainbow rocking chair, to celebrate Pride Month. I think companies should just stay away from that. They just should. Because, I mean, it's not going to get them. Especially a company who's had a history of conservative statements. Where's that going to get you? Oh, our DEI score is going to be higher. Yeah, well, and some joker from Seattle who's a real estate guy is now, you know, kind of lifting the little, a little, little bit and going, huh, what's going on? And I'm not the only one. There's a ton of folks going, hey, what's going on the Cracker Barrel? Aside from serving oversized portions of country staples, that makes that that sounds good. Uh, biscuits and gravy. Um, I have never eaten at a Cracker Barrel. I don't think we have. Do we have any here in Seattle? We might have one up north somewhere. I just never eaten at one. I just yeah, not my thing. But I hear from so many of you that it's a decent hotel. Uh, not a hotel. It's a decent restaurant. There's a lot of them. Consistent food. So if you're in an area of town, you're in a different town that you don't know, you see a Cracker Barrel, you're like, oh, okay. So I would probably eat at one because enough of you have said, hey, decent food, decent price, decent environment, you know, it, not terrible. Not terrible is the answer, right? Aside from serving oversized portions of country staples, the chain is beloved for the Tennessee-made rocking chairs that line the porches at all Cracker Barrel trinket-filled old country stores. So... They've got this history of the rocking chairs. Now they got a rainbow one. Now they got a rainbow one. You know, there's nothing wrong with a rainbow rocking chair. But when you put it in your marketing, you're kind of like, and you're not really a pride company. That's where it, it's my understanding that, um, is it the stock price in uh, in Cracker Barrel has dropped seven percent over the last five five sessions, something like that. I mean, pretty big drop. How about the billion and billion billion dollar drop in uh, Target stock? They deserve that. They just f themselves. And I'm afraid Cracker Barrel is going down the same same thing here. But you know, all these big companies are doing that. Right before um, right before I. Um, I, I decided, yeah, I'm going to do this podcast. There was an article about D. Snyder from Twisted Sister, right? And he's pretty anti-LGBTQ. He's not anti-LGBTQ. He's anti the whole, hey, you know, we want your children to be talking about this in kindergarten, their sexuality options. He's kind of anti all that. And uh, I agree with mo most of what he said. But what's funny about D. Snyder, if you don't know who D. Snyder is, he's the lead singer of uh, Twisted Sister. I think he's in his 60s now. Um, but he basically he sings like, you know, uh, we're not going to take it. 
a classic, just hard rocks, you know, big, big drums, big guitar. You know, we're not gonna take it while he's wearing makeup and a dress and women's clothing, right? We're not gonna take it. So, you know, it's kind of funny. I mean, and, and he's, he's, he's not more, he's, he's along the, the conservative side, not as conservative as say Ted Nugent from Amboy Duke, man. Those were the days where you'd listen to that and go, that is some, that's insane. Like in the 1970s and, um, you know, that, that stuff coming out and you've got Ted Nugent, you could always kind of hear when Ted Nugent was playing a song. Cause he's just got that, he's just got that different sound. Right. And it was that real driving early, you know, just, I'm a big Ted fan. Yeah, he says some stuff too. He's pretty conservative. And he says some stuff that's like, Ted, if you just backed it down a little bit, Uncle Ted, um, things would probably go better for you. But he gives zero Fs, right? And D. Snyder does either. He's just like, ah, it's what we're doing. And that's what the article was today was, yeah, I'm not taking back any of my whatever you perceive to be anti-trans comments. He's not doing it. He's D. Snyder. He's the lead singer of Twisted Sister. That's what he's got going on. So we got the we got the uh, pride month and we got the rocking chairs. Thus the chain honored pride month in June with an Instagram photo of a rocking chair with each wood slat painted a different color of the rainbow in nod to the pride flag. They would have been better off doing nothing and just letting their score, you know, suffer. But everybody feels like they've got to, we've got to conform and we've, we've got to be recognized for everybody for being really inclusive and, We've got to, you know, focus on our diversity and all this stuff. When in fact, if you look at everything that Cracker Barrel's done over the years, like, okay, yeah, you, you, you don't really support the rainbow and the whole rainbow that it stands for. You don't really support that. So everyone is always welcome at our table and our rainbow rocker said the Cracker Barrel captioned the photo. The post immediately outraged social media users with more than 2,000 comments in less than 23 hours. It's kind of like, who was it? Los Angeles Dodgers and their support of some group that's anti-Catholic church. I had friends on uh, Instagram saying, ah, I'm burning my Dodgers uniform, my Dodgers coat. Okay, all right, I get it. Yeah, it's your right to do that. A lot of stuff going on, right? Because the whole Pride Month. Just run your business and stay out of politics, one commenter posted, while others accused the brand of rainbow washing. I had not heard that term, but it makes sense. And that's when a brand promotes pro-LGBTQ plus messaging for Pride Month in the spirit of marketing, but doesn't authentically support the movement. That's, that's what we're seeing so many companies do. You know, they just got to throw their hat in the whole support Pride Month, when in fact, do they really? I think everybody just sees right through it. Let's see, you're Cracker Barrel, and you've said you will not hire gay people in the past. All of a sudden, you had a come to Jesus moment? Okay, all right, probably not. Therefore, we're just going to ridicule you, and we're going to post a lot of really negative stuff on your Instagram post. This one, that one doesn't bother me as much. Whatever. You got a rocking chair. I mean, not my thing, but okay. But the whole trans, you know, bathing suit with a flap for genitalia that may or may not, you know, need to be there post whatever transition. Um, that one's kind of a no go. The whole Bud Light with, um, he, you know, Dylan Mulvaney. That one was a real head scratcher. It's like, okay, that is not the demographic of the typical Bud Light drinker, you know, and, and that individual at Bud Light's marketing or the marketing team that uh, did that campaign, they, they got axed, as they should. Um, Coles, another one. How about Nike doing Dylan Mulvaney in a, um, in a sports bra? And she doesn't have, you know, anything that needs to be held up by a sports bra? That one to me was like, okay, all right. Yeah, I can see the conflict there. That doesn't make a lot of sense either. So you just got all these stores going down these pathways and losing a bunch of stock value. Where was your appreciation for veterans? You can always find something else to, you know, kind of pick on, right? Yet you celebrate a month of someone's sexuality, question mark. Kind of weird, another wrote. 
Though Cracker Barrel shared a post honoring its veteran employees on November 11th. Okay, fair enough. There's always a counter argue, right? Others took to Twitter to say they were quite shocked that Cracker Barrel, which is based in Tennessee, would make such a post. I used to love Cracker Barrel, but I can go without them, another wrote. Of course, everybody should be welcome. So why specifically align your business with one group? I will probably consider not shopping at Target. My girlfriend has said she will probably not shop at Target anymore based on their decision to kind of go down this really weird road of, hey, yeah, let's let's have some Satan-inspired designs made by a real-life Satanist. Got that podcast here on this channel. Um, and then we got the bathing suit issue. Bathing suit. It's made for just really, 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 really small adults, otherwise known as children. It was just, it was so... It, just what you're doing? What that one to me is uh, at a state where I would say, yeah, I, yeah, I could, I could boycott that because that that is ridiculous. The rainbow rocking chair, uh, okay, all right, whatever. I'd probably still eat at Cracker Barrel, but if you're like a real diehard, you're gonna say, no, yeah, there's other restaurants I can go to, and I wouldn't blame you based on your beliefs, whatever those might be. Yet another angered user quipped that the chain has gone crackers. That's for sure. Good one. Another tweet, meanwhile, called for a boycott to ensure Cracker Barrel suffers the same fate as Bud Light, which has seen sales tank since it celebrated trans social media stars. And that was Dylan Mulvaney's 365 Days of Girlhood on April 1st. That was just a massive effing blunder. That 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 will go down in textbook history of how not to market your company's business because they're trying to identify Bud Light drinkers with, you know, uh, something that is not, not the demographic of the typical Bud Light drinker. And the Bud Light drinkers, they let Bud Light know. They let Anheuser-Busch know that it was a hard no-go. Does Cracker Barrel have any idea who its customers are? Yeah, they, they lean more conservative, right? So this whole thing is like, all right, well, we're going to take some hits on social media. We're going to probably take a little hit in business, but then we're going to write it out and our, our score is going to be so much better. This is going to be great. Let's, let's, let's do the rocking chair thing, right? It's as easy to stop going to Cracker Barrel as it is to stop buying Bud Light, the post said. All right, fair enough. I think it is easier to stop buying Bud Light because that is just one product. If you're in love with going to Cracker Barrel, and I, I know a number of you are because you've let me know, I love Cracker Barrel. Are you not going to go there now? Well, you do have options of a lot of different restaurants, right? I want to go eat at one just because I, I want to see what the big deal is about. I want to get some biscuits and gravy. It sounds really good. Bud Light saw sales plunge 23.9% for the week ending May 27th. As a result, the ongoing boycott, boycott slightly better than the 25% drop a week earlier. They've lost, I think it was, um, I was going to do the podcast, but I, I gave up and talked about yet another building in San Francisco going back to a lender. Um, 11 billion in valuation, I believe, Target has lost. I mean, and Bud Light? Oof. Not good. The devastating fall puts the struggling beer brand on track to lose its number one status in the U.S. to Modelo, which I believe is also owned by Anheuser-Busch, right? Um, I, I think Modelo's an okay beer. Bud Light? No. I just ugh. can't do it. No can do. Which has been outselling the embattled beer brand for weeks now. Modelo. Modelo. They do have kind of those cool bottles. It's like unique. You're like, ah, that's Modelo right there. Cracker Barrel critics wondered why the chain, which has more than 660 locations nationwide, hasn't learned from others who have made this mistake. Because it's a risk reward thing, right? And their perception is, is that they need to be in this group of big companies, restaurants, businesses, whatever that are looked upon favorably for their inclusionary policies, including social media. Stupid, stupid, stupid decision, another comment in the conversation Instagram post. All right. All right. Here's one from Colette Harrington. Colette Harrington. 
Cracker Barrel has no idea who their consumer base is. They've gone crackers, that's for sure. Who is the, what is the government up to that's making all these companies give the middle finger to their customers? This Bud Light's for you. Go woke, go broke. Cracker Barrel, this Bud's for you. This Bud's for you. How about the uh, you know, men of genius ce- celebrating men of genius? That's a, those are some great campaigns by Budweiser. How about Rainier beer back in the day? You got Rainier Mountain and you got that guy coming up on a motor sky cycle and it's Rainier. That was awesome, right? That's, that's just classic marketing back in the 70s. You got that, what, two stroke engine maybe? Yeah. Cracker Barrel also shared the pro pride image on Facebook, which offers sad, angry, and love buttons beside the transitional, besides the traditional like. More than 4,000 marked that the post made them sad, while over 2,000 onlookers were angered by it. So if you post on Instagram, you can automatically shoot it on through to Facebook because Facebook owns Instagram, that whole thing. I do a lot of stuff on Instagram. If, if, if you want to go see my ridiculousness on Instagram, it's Sean Reynolds 68. I do some short videos of what I've got going on. And we got some boating. I think I've got some gardening. I've just got some ridiculousness there. And I do that thing to, to Facebook. And I know the demographic. I know news for reasonable people. A lot more of you are on Facebook than you are on Instagram. But I kind of gave up on Facebook a long time ago. Because everybody, all the cool kids had already left and gone to Instagram. I did the same thing. And um, I, I, I've kind of bailed on Facebook or meta, we should call it meta. That is ridiculous. Meta's gamble on meta. Yeah, that whole weird deal. Among more than 10,000 comments, many bid Cracker Barrel adieu for going broke. Go woke, go broke. That's, I mean, that is, that is absolutely true. Goodbye. I enjoyed you in the past, but your values have changed. One commented while another said the chain lost a customer because of the post. Another said they were tired of having this crap forced on us. Again, nodding to companies like Bud Light maker Anheuser-Busch, plus retailers Target, Walmart, and Kohl's that have all recently come under fire for their Pride Month celebrations. Again, I always go back to how'd you get a full month out of it? I mean, good for you. You got a full month out of it. All right. Okay. How? Because nobody else does. Nobody else does. And just, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, it, it's mind blowing, but it, it's 2023. I guess this is what we're doing. And now Cracker Barrel is, you know, in the past, they have literally said, we're not hiring anybody that, you know, the rainbow chair is for. We're just not doing that. It's against our values. That was a while ago. And now it's 2023 and they feel like, wow. Oh, we got to get our woke going. We got to get our woke game going. Let's throw out a rainbow chair. Everybody is welcome. And that's fine. But, you know, these companies feel pressure to do this inclusionary thing. And you know what? I think most people can kind of see through it. Hey, this wasn't exactly your stance before. Did you have a come to Jesus moment? And you're like, okay, we, we got to get this woke action going on. And then that's what they do. We need, uh, you know, for Bud Light, we need to have Dylan Mulvaney, who was a man, you know, pretending to be a woman. Um, we need to have her have her own can. And they did. They did a, didn't, it wasn't even really a promotional. It was just a f- handful of cans with her picture on it. And, you know, she's drinking Bud Light. She's not drinking Bud Light. Dylan Mulvaney does not drink Bud Light. Dylan Mulvaney drinks some kind of spritzer. Uh, I'm not trying to be, you know, weird or anything. Ain't drinking Bud Light. Guarantee you that for sure. Um, Because the folks that do drink Bud Light, they let us know that they're no longer drinking Bud Light because, you know, trying to push this down this road that um, doesn't make any sense at all. And so Cracker Barrel with the rainbow chair, the rainbow rocking chair. All right. It'll be interesting to follow and see. All right. You got one more company. Trying to do the woke thing, trying to do the inclusionary thing. Hey, come sit on our rainbow chair. It's for everybody. When in the past, they've literally said the opposite and their policy has been the opposite. We will not hire you. Oh, 
But now it's 2023 and they're feeling pressure to do so because, you know, Target has bathing suits made for little people, small people that, you know, are just transgender friendly thing. And they've just taken a massive whack for that. So will Cracker Barrel take a massive whack for this? Eh, I don't know. Eh, probably temporarily. But you know what? People like to eat at Cracker Barrel. They're going to they're gonna go, hey, what are you doing? People in the South are probably going to go, absolutely not. We're not eating at Cracker Barrel. This will blow over. You know what? I really like their biscuits and gravy, whatever it might be. I really like that. Should we go back? Yeah, let's go back. It was delicious. What's what's for? Well, just pretend that the whole rainbow chair never happened. What rainbow chair? What rainbow chair? Go woke, go broke. I think that's what happens, right? Realistically, that's what happens. People like what they like, and then they they just have that. Oh, yeah, that happened, but you know, biscuits and gravy is really good. All right, that's all I got on this one. <laughs> Whatever it might be at Cracker Barrel, tell me what you love at Cracker Barrel, or what you're going to be boycotting now from Cracker Barrel in the comments. Thanks so much for being part of News for Reasonable People and sticking to, uh, you know, this point in the podcast. I'll catch up with you in the next one. Bye for now.